Good morning. We are going to start our family worship this morning, and we are going to do it as usual. I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit will be with us singing Psalm 95.6. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as a family, as a camp, that we can come and ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us. Please, Lord, help us that we will learn more, that we will remember the things that we have been studying during the week, and that we can enjoy a beautiful Sabbath of communion with you. Lord, help us to remember if there is anything we need to remember about our personal life that we may have communion with you today and then come together and reason with you. Guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the family altar. Thank you so much. Welcome to the family altar. Welcome, Governor. Welcome to the family altar. Welcome to the family altar. Welcome to the family altar. Thank you. Welcome to the family altar. On the Sabbath day, we have a special part, and that is the hymn 385, Crowning Jewels of Creation. We like to sing that one because it's the Sabbath day, so now we will sing that. It's part of our special Sabbath token. No. I don't have the music with me. Crowning jewel of creation, blessed and hallowed, sanctified. Time and changes, so transcending, shared forever, glorified. Blessed Sabbath made for man, give from the Creator's hand. Sin and sickness, prayer and weeping, cease at close of early days. But thy Sabbath is eternal, joyful things to thee we rest. Blessed Sabbath made for man, give from the Creator's hand. Teach us, Lord, in storm or sunshine How to truly rest in Thee May Thy Sabbath peace enfold us And forever ever be Blessed Sabbath made for man Give from the Creator's hand 
Now we will do the scripture reading, and this will be today from John 20, verse 3 to 10. And it says, verse 3, Peter therefore went forward, and that other disciple, who? That other disciple. And came to the sepulchre, so they ran both together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first. Came? First. To the sepulchre. Sister Teresa, would you mind reading the next verse for us? You can see? Is it good? And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, the scripture. that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own homes. Their own? Home. Memory verses, we will repeat after me. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ, but now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruits. And become the first fruits. Of them that slept. Of them that slept. First Corinthians fifteen twenty. First Corinthians fifteen twenty. Ready to sing? But now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. Now is First Corinthians fourteen twenty. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of the Next is Luke sixteen ten, and then you can repeat after me. Luke sixteen ten. Luke sixteen ten. He that is faithful. He that is faithful. In that which is least. In that which is least. Is faithful also. Is faithful also. In much. In much. And he that is unjust. And he that is unjust. In the least. In the least. Is unjust. Is unjust. Also in much. Also in much. Luke sixteen ten. Luke sixteen ten. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Luke. We will read from the Desire of Ages, page 781. It says the first portion. 
The faces of the priests were as those of the dead. How? The dead. The dead. Do you know why? Okay, we'll keep reading so you can see. Caiaphas tried to speak. His lips moved, but they uttered no sound. The soldiers were about to leave the council room when a voice stayed them. Caiaphas had at last found speech. Wait, wait, he said. Tell no one the things you have seen. What did they say? Tell no one the things that you have seen. Mm -hmm. A lying report was then given to the soldiers. Say ye, said the priest. His disciples came by night and stole him away while, he, that while we slept. How do you call that? Lie. That's a lie. Here the priests overreached themselves. How could the soldiers say that the disciples had stolen the body while they slept? If they were asleep, how could they know? <laughs> Number one, right? Eh? And if the disciples had been proved guilty of stealing Christ's body, would not the priests have been first to condemn them? Or if the sentinels had slept at the tomb, would not the priests have been foremost in accusing them to Pilate? The soldiers were horrified at the thought of bringing upon themselves the charge of sleeping at their post. This was an offense punishable with death. death. With what? Death. 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 <clears throat> Should they bear false witness, deceiving the people, and placing their own lives in peril? Had they not kept their weary watch with sleepless vigilance? How could they stand the trial even for the sake of money if they perjure, perjured themselves? In order to silence the testimony they feared, the priest promised to secure the safety of the guard, saying that Pilate would not desire to have such a report circulated any more than they did. The Roman soldiers sold their integrity to the Jews for money. Was that nice? What are we going to do? If someone asks us to say a lie. Not say it. Not say it. Mm -hmm. They came in before the priest, burdened with a most startling message of truth. They went out with their burden of money, and on their tongues a lying report which had been framed for them by the priest. Meanwhile, the report of Christ's resurrection had been carried to Pilate. Though Pilate was responsible for having given Christ up to die, he had been comparatively unconcerned. While he had condemned the Savior unwillingly and with a feeling of pity, he had felt no real compunction until now. In terror, he now shut himself within his house, determined to see no one. But the priests made their way into his presence, told the story which they had invented, and urged him to overlook the sentinel's neglect of duty. Before consenting to this, he himself privately questioned the guard. They, fearing for their own safety, dare not conceal anything, and Pilate drew from them an account of all that had taken place. He did not prosecute the matter further but from that time there was no peace for him so you see children when we don't do what is right what happened in our hearts there is no peace that's the guilt there's no peace
You know, when we <clears throat> think about um, the time in which we're living, as we uh, just heard these words from the Desire of Ages, and we bring it home and consider uh, ourselves, our own situations, <clears throat> our own homes, are we in any way like these priests? Um, and if we are, now is the time. Now is the time to repent so that we might have peace. I know many of us might be sitting here uh, just now as we are hearing these words and uh, thinking about how maybe our hearts are not at peace. God wants to give us that. And especially on the Sabbath day, uh, we see that his body rested on the Sabbath, in the tomb even, in quietude. And uh, just like those priests' heart, uh, they were in turmoil. There was noise. There was confusion. And God wants to uh, clean all of that away. If we've lied, if we've slept when we should have been awake, now is the time to repent and not make the wrong worse by lying. And, uh, and so uh, these words this morning, may they burn within our hearts so that we can have clean hearts. The priests could have, but it was too late for them. And uh, it's not too late for us. So may we uh, surrender our hearts to Jesus so that we might have clean hearts and have that peace. What is the character quality for this week? Neatness. Neatness. What does neatness, cleanliness? No music. No disorderly music, right? That's part of the character quality. And last night we had some disorderly music disturbing our minds and our rest, right? We cannot sleep well with that music. Do you think that in heaven they have that kind of music? No. Oh, no, because order is heaven's first yeah. law. And there are laws also within music. And the enemy wants us to hear music that is disorderly. So that will make us also have disordered thoughts, disordered hearts, disordered actions and that we would have a spirit of combat and rebellion and disobedience just by hearing the wrong type of music. Music the way that the angels sing it and the way that is played and sang in heaven, it's orderliness, it's neatness. Wouldn't it be beautiful to be in heaven and hear the angels singing? The choir singing, would you like even to sing with them? Yeah. It would be beautiful, right? The most beautiful music we've ever heard. So just like there are keynotes, and it's from Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, and the next one is? Do. Do, again, and it goes again and again. It reminds us of orderliness. What would it be if in one piano, then you have do, mi, la, and then re, re. would that be orderliness? Mm. Do you think that mom Vita would be able to play in a piano that is disorderly? No. How would the music sound if she wants to play something beautiful and, oh, that's not the note, but it's in the position, oh, no. Would it, would it sound nice? No, so that would be disorder, right? And we want in our lives orderliness, neatness. We want to ask the Lord, Lord, what is in my heart that is like a piano out of tune? Am I lying like the Pharisees? Am I 
sowing discord like they were? Am I crucifying the Savior with my actions again, with my sins? Can you put that heart in order, please, that it'll be at peace with you and with everybody else that is around me? Do you like to have your clothes orderly or just like, oh, I'm looking for a sock and you cannot find it? How do you like it to be? Orderly. Orderly. That's right. Like, um, remember that time that the soldier came and stayed in our house and he taught us how in the army they teach them how to fold their clothes and it has to be certain measurement and we had a project of putting our clothes in order we rolled it put it nicely together remember that was a good project right so that's something that our friends listening here can do when they go home they can look at their drawers see what is needed what is not needed and put things in order Okay, what are the things that we have been talking during this week about nature? Greenhouse. What do you what did you learn about the greenhouses? It keeps the plants warm. Kayla, did you learn anything about nature this week? What did you learn? That the plants cannot grow if there is not heat. Uh -huh. They need heat, they need warmth so they can grow. What did you learn, Cadmiel? Yeah. Nothing? I cannot believe that. You learned something. You remember what Sister Lydia LaJewel and Mommy and Daddy talk about the greenhouses? You remember that? How is that? Not today. <laughs> yes, but I was talking about during the week, not only today. We didn't talk today much about that. We are doing a review today, and I wanted to know if you, if you remember anything. You remember anything about the roof of the greenhouses? How is it? This. They said slanted. Remember that shape? Now, okay. So you remember something? You see, you learned something. He doesn't remember the one thing you find. Oh, cool. of course, he, he doesn't remember those. But we have been learning that even in our nature, we have lessons that reminds us of the lesson. What was the lesson? The resurrection of? And what nature brings for us about the resurrection? Anything that we can remember from nature and resurrection? That the seed needs to die before it. Gross. gross exactly very good so Jesus had to die for us before human beings could grow into the likeness of Christ and be in heaven when he comes okay question mm -hmm. what did they use so they convinced the soldiers not to say the truth what did they use they gave them something what was it money very money. good very good did the soldiers agree or disagree what did they say the truth or the lie disagree they disagree really but what did they do tell a lie tell, a lie. tell the lie so were they victorious in their trial no, but you see, they wanted to say something different. They disagree, yet they did wrong. How many times we may want to say something right. We may want to be victorious, but yet we fail. They sold the truth. They sold the truth, so we have to be careful with that. Many people may want to do right, but they cannot fight the battle. We want to have victory in the battles very good okay. okay for the practical application this morning we have how many plates here can you count them 
Six. Six plates. What does number six remind us of? Man. man. So it reminds us that Jesus Christ came as a man to show us how to live. Now, um, it's five and we are, uh, sorry, there's six plates and we are six. So let's see if each one of us can pick an item from one of the plates and see how we can apply it to the lesson. Okay, Daddy, what does it say? My body. Oh, completely. Okay. My body is temple of... And I'll pick the next plate so it can go together. Oh, it goes together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of the Holy Spirit. Well, what came to my mind when I was going to pick it up, I thought it was only the body, but anyhow, it's okay. It still fits, is that I always remember the white blood cells because the white blood cells, um, they fight for us and they sacrifice themselves. When a white blood cells attack the bacteria, many times they die because they get these bacteria in and they die. And that's how we become having pus because it's a group of white blood cells that have died. But they die so we can be saved. So it always reminds me about Christ's sacrifice for us. Okay. Sister Teresa, would you like to pick an item from another plate? I have a globe here that shows uh, the whole world and uh, it makes me think about Jesus. He was one man, but he was God as well. And he came here to show us how to live. And not just those that uh, were around at that time, but for everyone uh, on the whole globe since the beginning of time. And uh, it it's just so wonderful that uh, to see what his life can do uh, for the whole world, yet, you know, he's, he died for us, yet he's still allowing us to choose whether or not we want him in our life so that we too can live that perfect holy life. And so it, it just makes me uh, see once again how uh, important this lesson of his death and resurrection really is. Um, he didn't just die for those that were living then, but he died for all of us. And in our lesson it said that he was given all power. So uh, when you look at the universe, it's very powerful. And so all power was given to God and to Jesus. And his resurrection shows us that if we believe in him and what he's done for us, he in turn will give us power, all power that's necessary to walk the same path that he took. Amen. Thank you. Kevin, is there any item that reminds you of your lesson? Okay, what do you find in that plate? A cactus and a sheep. Uh huh. A lamb, a sheep. What What can you think of an application for the lesson? That Jesus was the lamb who died. Jesus was the lamb who died. Okay. Kayla, can you choose an item and see what does it remind you of? Okay, what does it remind you about your lesson? That an angel came and took, 
took out the stone from the tomb so Jesus will arise. All right. Can you tell us how many stones do you find in that plate? Count them in order so you don't keep counting the same ones. How many? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve stones. Okay. What what does it remind us of with twelve stones? Twelve disciples. Okay, what else? Twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve tribes of Israel. Can you say it again? Twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve tribes of Israel. Something in the sanctuary that can remind us of twelve stones? What was built in the sanctuary that had twelve stones? Ah, uh, the, the altar. The altar of? Incense. No, not the altar of incense. Sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice. So, next to Cadmiel, next to the plate where the stones are, you find a little lamb, right? Can you bring it to the next plate, please? So, we are reminded that in the temple, in the sanctuary, Only the lamb, only the lamb. El borreguito, the lamb. Put it right here. Right. We are reminded with those 12 stones that the lamb was slain for us. That was in the sanctuary. But each one of us, can you hold it there for me, please? Each one of us have a body that is the temple of Jesus. Who is the lamb? Jesus. Jesus. Who is the rock? Jesus. And we see Jesus in the sanctuary, right? And it is a constant reminder that our bodies should be a living sacrifice. Now, Camille, what do you see in this one here? What shape is it? Like a law of obedience. Like an O of obedience. Can you show it, please? Yes. And this, one of the songs that we've been singing says, that Jesus obeyed and make himself of no reputation and he obeyed the mission that God had for him. You can sit down, Camille. Thank you. That a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13, John 15, 13, greater love. Greater love has no man than this. 
greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13, John 15, 13, greater love. That reminds us the world, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world That He gave His only begotten Son That whosoever believed in Him Should not perish but have everlasting glory John 3.16 For God so loved the world That He gave His only begotten Son That whosoever believed in Him Should not perish but have everlasting Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Psalm 95, verse 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to have this family altar. And as we continue during the day, Lord, please rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus and bring us peace that we can enjoy the Sabbath day. Help us, Lord, that we can remember the lessons of the resurrection, that we may have a new life, life out of this world and close to your heaven, Lord, that we can enjoy heaven even now in this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a happy Sabbath. Thank you.